I know what you're thinking. Student data privacy. Why should I care about that? Actually, I'm pretty sure you aren't thinking that. I mean, you care about your students and you want the best for them. Not only providing them with an outstanding education, but also protecting them from harm. That could potentially mean physical harm, mental harm, or technological harm. What comes to your mind when you think of ways a student could be harmed using technology? You're probably not thinking about Skynet sending an army of T-800s from the future to destroy John Connor, but maybe you're thinking about cyberbullying or online predators. One threat you might not have thought too much about is protecting their privacy. And since you work with their data and occasionally share their data, it really should be an integral part of how you do your job. In order to better understand your role, let me give you a quick history lesson regarding technology in the classroom. The technology in the classroom in the 70s to early 80s might have consisted of just one computer in the corner of the room, or possibly the projector the whole school had to share that you peeled in from the library. During the early 90s, you might have had a handful of computers, maybe even a laser disc player. In the late 90s, you might have had a full computer lab for the whole school to share. Nowadays, it's not uncommon to see an iPad or Chromebook on every desk. One reason for such explosive growth of technology in the classroom is how cheap devices have become. For the price of that one computer back in the 70s, you can now purchase an entire classroom set. In terms of storage, you could only use programs that fit onto the hard drive of your computer, all 256 glorious megabytes. You could even possibly use a floppy disk, or a few years later, a floppy disk. Then came along the CD-ROM, and you could play higher quality games with much improved graphics. Now you can hold an entire library of games and products on a simple thumb drive, which is now obsolete because it's all on the cloud. As data storage has become cheaper, we've started to collect more data on our students. Lastly, the types of programs you can run on personal devices has been changing as well. Early games on floppy disks taught us that if you're crossing the plains to Oregon, you always choose the banker so that you can pay for the ferry to cross the river. Doesn't matter, you're just gonna die of dysentery anyway. CD-ROMs allowed us to travel the world in order to catch Carmen San Diego. Now modern technology allows us to gamify our classrooms, create interactive quizzes over the internet, and take virtual expeditions to ancient Greece. Whoa, it's, it's the Parthenon! It's like I'm really there! Cheaper technology that's accessible through the internet and relatively inexpensive to gather and store data. These three factors have caused a shift in how we use technology in our schools. So how does this impact schools and educators when it comes to protecting student data privacy? Technology used to be so expensive that the district was the only one who could afford to purchase it. But now we're all bringing in new technology and devices that haven't been vetted by the district and may not meet their technology and security standards. And in the past, the district used to vet and purchase all software used in schools. But now since educational apps are often free, it's not just the district bringing technology into the classroom, it's you. If students are being signed up for apps and websites in the classroom, we're sharing student data with those companies. Data that could include personally identifiable information, like their name, birth date, gender, grade level, email. I know this information could be seen as relatively harmless, especially if the school's designated it as directory information. And if you don't know what that is, check out the video in the link in the description. But when they're using a program, that relatively harmless information could be paired with information they might not want getting out there. This could include location data, assessment data, behavioral data, and loads of other data that could be an invasion of their privacy in the wrong hands. Particularly if the company ends up building a profile on the student and selling the information. Or if they don't keep it secure and it ends up being stolen. If you remember nothing else, remember this. The internet was built to maximize sharing information, not keeping it secure. But before you throw away all your technology, invest heavily in tinfoil, and move to that cabin in Montana, Mayor Butte's lovely this time of year. Just know that there are ways to use technology and protect your students' privacy. Luckily, you don't have to figure it out on your own. Your school probably already has policies in place about student privacy, so familiarize yourself with them. Just remember, if you collect it, protect it.